Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? It's a little chilly out there. It's a bit of a surprise, right? We're not going to complain about this weather. It's beautiful. We're about to hear some incredible Irish traditional music. And so welcome to the 15th annual Minnesota Irish Music Weekend. The very first festival was in 2007, so if you're really good at math, we took a few years off here and there. But it's presented by the Center for Irish Music, which is a traditional Irish music school based right here at the Celtic Junction Art Center. So these are our classrooms right up here. And just as of January 2023, we now have a whole extra floor full of classrooms right down here. Um, yeah, it's really wonderful. So we built a, the Scanlon Music Hall and three new studios, and phase one of our project is all finished, and phase two is pretty much funded, and we're now, we're now just getting ready to uh, build a handicapped accessible door right here where this bush is <laughs> to our space. So it's been a really big year, and... Uh, it's so wonderful to have you all here at the Celtic Junction. This is the first big summer concert, outdoor summer concert of the year. So this is the official kickoff. And uh, we thought we might be sitting out here sweating, but we're sitting out here putting our ponytail holders in. <laughs> right? Right. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to start by... Uh, thanking our sponsor. So our major sponsor of the Minnesota Irish Music Weekend this year is the Government of Ireland Emigrant Support Program. They have given us a significant grant for the festival this year, so please give them a huge round of applause. We would not be here without that grant. Um, we also get general operating support from the Minnesota State Arts Board, which is supported by the taxpayers of Minnesota. So thanks to you. And then our other sponsors are Larkin Hoffman, uh, the Urban Growler, the Holiday Inn, the Celtic Junction Arts Center, and uh, that's all of our sponsors for this festival. So give them a round of applause. And I wanted to do uh, an announcement about a concert that's happening next weekend, a week from today. Adrienne O'Shea is going to be releasing her brand new debut solo album. So come on out and uh, support Adrienne right here. And she's going to have a fantastic opening act called the Taking Flight Collective, Ava Sakharov and Carmen Pascarella with Brian Miller. So come on out, get your tickets now and come out and support that. It'll be a really, really great night. More traditional music and tons of traditional songs. So I wanted to introduce <clears throat> to you now our MC for the night. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Nick Lethert. How's it going? Uh, I know you are all out celebrating all day for Judy Garland's 101st birthday, but it's not going to stop now. Are there any Judys in the crowd? I know of at least one. Judy Larson's here. But Judys everywhere are celebrating today, as I'm sure all of you are, and I'm sure all of you at some stage have sung um, that you wished upon a star to wake up where the clouds were far behind you. And here you are. There's still clouds, but you're at the 15th annual Minnesota Irish Music Weekend at Celtic Junction. You are over the rainbow. And that's going to be the last sing-along we're doing tonight, by the way. So don't let me just be the one to sing it to you, because you're all going to. Because this is where troubles melt like lemon drops, <laughs> away above the chimney tops. That's where you found yourself. And you're here to see some incredible music, starting with Grania Hambly from County Mayo, a fan fabulous harp player. Please welcome <laughs> Grania Hambly. And Brian Miller from, I think, the same town Judy Garland was born, right, Brian? 
Tell them about that. Um, I, I was amused there. I thought that introduction was just for me because my daughter back in Ireland is currently preparing to play Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. So I've been listening to that song a lot, a lot. <laughs> anyway, on a totally different note, I'm going to start off with two jigs. Um, the first one is called The Sheep in the Boat, and it's a, a lovely jig um, kind of created as a jig by Junior Crehan from County Clare um, based on the Slower on a Cúin, which was a, an air about a... a, a a drowning tragedy, um, but the jig is a, a bit more cheerful. And um, I'm going to continue then with the Green Fields of Woodford, which is another of my favourite jigs. And thanks, Brian, for joining me for these. <laughs> Brian, that was lovely. Um, so I'm going to play an, a next selection for you now on obviously the harp. Um, I'm going to play one of my favourite slow airs, which is 
um, a tune that's actually based on a composition by Turlock O'Carolan, who I'm sure a lot of you have heard of. He's our most famous harper and composer. And the original melody was called Captain O'Kane, but it was um, turned into a, well, a poet called Thomas Campbell set a song to the melody, which was called The Wounded Hussar. And then it kind of evolved in the Shannos tradition, and it became um, a sort of a, a Shannos song and a slow air in the tradition. So this is The Wounded Hussar. And I'll follow it with a hornpipe called The Humours of Tully Cryan. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks very much. I, I'm going to play one more selection for you now, and it's got three tunes in it. And um, before I start, I have to just say, well, thanks to be to Nora and to everyone involved in the festival for inviting me here. I've been having a fantastic time, and I have to say, you should be so proud of all your local young musicians and teachers and everything. It's just fantastic to see the standard of music here. Um, Yeah, like you possibly take it for granted, but you do not find this everywhere, trust me. So um, it's very impressive. And special thanks to Hannah Flowers, who's the local harp teacher here, for lending me this harp. Um, <laughs> it's, it's the first time I, my own harp at home is like a twin of this one, but I don't have that pickup, so I might get a taste for this power now, the, the loud bass, you know. Um, Anyway, um, so the tunes I'm going to play are, the first one is a tune that was collected in 1802 in Westport in County Mayo by Edward Bunting, a great collector of harp music. And he collected a lot of music at the Belfast Harp Festival, but he also traveled around and collected tunes in Mayo, where I'm from, and other places, but I prefer the Mayo ones. So the tune is called Sunday Morning. And um, the second tune then is, since I know there's lots of dancers here, I decided to play one of my current favorite tunes, which is, um, commonly played nowadays as a set dance. In fact, I learned it because it was my daughter's set dance a few years ago, and I, I was listening to it so many times, I thought, oh, I better just learn to play that. But it's actually a composition of Turlock O'Carolyn originally, and it's called Planks to Hugh O'Donnell. And then I'll finish off with a single jig called Willie Clancy's. And um, thanks so much. Thanks to Cormac for working on the sound there, and thanks, everyone. Have a great evening.
Beautiful. Absolutely fabulous. Thanks, Grania. This next group is sort of a, an experiment and a world premiere of a band that I'm going to name. I'm going to name them the Five Corners Band. I don't know. I didn't really run that by them, but because they're from the five corners of the earth. We're going to introduce them one at a time, starting with the pride of Detroit. Oh, yeah. Joanne wanted me to tell you that um, the anchor is packing up. If you're hungry, you better get it now. Okay. All right. Where was it? Sean Gavin, the pride of Detroit. On the flute and the pipes. Thanks, Rick. You're welcome. Next up, Sean McComiskey, the pride of Baltimore. Next we have Marla Fibish from the pride of San Francisco. There's a lot of pride. It is Pride Weekend. <laughs> Next up, Gavin Strap, the pride of Tipperary. And Dahi Sproul, the pride of Derry, the pride of St. Paul. The Five Corners Band.
How's it going? I'm Gavin, and I'm from Tipperary. As you can tell, I mightn't have too much of an American accent. Can, can you understand me out there? What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll play Tis a Long Way Indeed from Tipperary. But we're in St. Paul, though, so we're happy out. Um, I'm going to play a few tunes now. Uh, I'm going to have Dotty here play with me as well, so I'm delighted with that. <laughs> I'm going to play a tune called Cluck Hall Hen. I was uh, teaching with uh, some of the students here today and yesterday, and we were having good crack, mess messing around on the banjos inside, causing, causing divilment. And uh, we'll go into a reel then afterwards, then that I wrote a few years ago. So here we go. Thanks very much. Now I have to follow that, okay? <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so Dahi and I were speaking, we were chatting about uh, sweet old tunes. So, um, it, it, so I picked a few. So we're going to play a, um, a, a set dance called The Humors of Bandon that I've been very fond of for a long time and then follow it with a couple of slip jigs. Can you understand me? I'm from San Francisco. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Phew. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, a few slip jigs, the, uh, a fig fur kiss and The Humors of Derry Crescent. And uh, thank you so much to Nora for bringing me out to be a part of this amazing event. I'm just so grateful. And um, yeah. 
And huge thanks to T and John for uh, putting putting me putting up with me put, putting me up for uh, the weekend. So thank you so much.
Is everyone having a good time out there? I just want to give a big thank you to um, Nora and Cormac and everyone here at the, at the junction for having me up for this awesome uh, Irish Music Weekend. It's so exciting to be back up in Minnesota playing music with all these great folks. So thank you guys for such an awesome weekend. And to all my uh, great accordion students and my PT folks out there, it was a great, great day. Um, so I'm going to play uh, a set of tunes here. Um, on my brand new Mark Savoie Cajun accordion made in Louisiana, fresh off the press as of March. The bellows are still tight, so if I crash and burn, that's why. Uh, this is a set of tunes that's kind of a bit of a homage to one of my accordion uh, inspirations, the great Bobby Gardner. It's a set called the, into the, the, the Humors of Glen Dart into the Swallow's Tail Reel. Let me know if you can hear it okay. That was great. Great stuff, Sean. Sean McComiskey here is a good friend of mine for a very long time. We, uh, we made an album together with two great musicians, two sisters from, from Meath, Bernadette and Kochli Nagawan. And they, they send their regards. But uh, we have other connections as well. We're both named Sean. Our middle names are, both of our middle names are Vincent. Yeah. Our mother's names, both of us, are Anne. <laughs> and we have two brothers each, both named Michael and Patrick. 
We're very creative, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'm going to play a few tunes on the pipes, but I just want to say how great it is and echo what everybody else already said. It's amazing to be here and to see all of you. And there's such a great community here, and uh, I'm delighted to... I'm proud to say that I have been a teacher for the CIM, and thank you so much to Nora and to all the people involved here for the amazing work you've done. So it's, been, it's been so cool to see so many great young musicians you know, come to, to blossom through this great community here. So I'm uh, ever more impressed every time I come, and I never miss a chance. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'm going to play a slow air for you on the pipes called Shefa Mawarta, which I understand means the cause of my sorrows. I imagine it's about a girl. Uh, <laughs> and then I'll try a reel after that, and maybe... Um, so uh, anyway, I'll play these two. I hope you like them. Great to see you, great to see you all. Great to be here. Just going to tune for a second.
Thanks, everybody. Is this mic? Oh, it is working, obviously. Well, I, uh, Gavin just informed me before Sean started playing that I was up for a song. So it's a funny thing about singers, you know, they might know hundreds of songs, but if you suddenly ask them to sing a song, they can't think of anything, <coughs> which is very strange. <coughs> but anyhow, um, I'll try this. This is a very short little song and very incredibly unusual. I've always felt it's called an Hrach, which would mean the robbery. And uh, it's a song that I learned out of a book that a friend of mine had when I was a teenager. And um, it's, there are two verses. So the first verse, um, the, a man is uh, grieving and complaining because he's just been robbed. And he, he was absolutely destitute. And then the little he had was just stolen off him. So he's in a pretty bad way. <clears throat> so in the second verse, the robber responds. And I've al I always say this is very advanced social thinking. Because the robber uh, talks back to him and said, well, look, I'm surprised that you call yourself a Christian when you don't understand that I'm in an even worse situation than you are. I'm even poor. I don't have anywhere to live. So have a bit of sympathy, please. So. <laughs> <clears throat> and I did. I recorded this with um, Sean McComiskey's uh, father, Billy, years ago. So um, a great friend. So I'll give it a word. That was beautiful, Dahi. Sure. So we're going to play one more for you, and then um, I think we're going to have a little break after that to give you a chance to get a drink or some food, or where do you think you're going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the break is after this one, but the <laughs> I'm only teasing you. Go ahead. <laughs> 
Anyway, um, we're going to play a waltz, and there's plenty of space here for dancing. Look at that big dance concrete over there. So we're going to play a waltz and then a couple of reels. Um, but thanks again to all of you. It's a really amazing thing to see such a great community here. And let's hear it for the great technical team here, too, led by Cormac O'Shea. There's, there's so many people to thank, um, all of the O'Shea's who've been driving us around. We've been driving them crazy and they've been driving us home. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're gonna play this waltz and then a couple reels, so there's plenty of space to dance to either one and maybe we'll even get a spe special guest dancer if, if she can be persuaded. If we give her a big cheer, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure who it's gonna be yet, but. <laughs>
Let's hear it for Anna and Adrian. Woo! Woo! Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, the Five Corners Band. We're going to take a 15-minute intermission. Nora is going to open the door uh, to the Scanlon room right around the corner. Sean, how happy were you to play that gig? Very, very happy. Yeah. Even happier to finish it. Like, what percentage? <laughs> oh, good. Anyway, um, it's right around the corner. If you need to use anything ceramic or if you need to get warm, um, you can do it in there. And don't forget there's CDs over there from all of these people. And see you soon.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, find your seats, grab your drink, and uh, we're going to get started for our second half. I wanted to let you know that, uh, so the Minnesota Irish Music Weekend has three programs, the Irish Trad Immersion Camp, the teen program, and the adult workshops, and there is still more workshops to be happening tomorrow. So if you're interested in finding out what's going on, go to centerforirishmusic.org forward slash MIM, M-I-M, for Minnesota Irish Music Weekend. It's not too late. You can come to workshops starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so check it out. Um, we have some summer camps that we are offering. So our summer term at the CIM starts next weekend, next week, sorry, it starts on Monday, June 12th. Um, but we have offerings all throughout the summer. Um, but I wanted to bring attention to some of our summer camps. Um, the week that are happening in the last week of July, first week of August. So it's Introduction to Irish Harp with Hannah Flowers. For eight to 12 year olds. So if, if that sounds interesting to you or someone that you know, please forward them, centerforirishmusic.org, say there's a summer camp, you can learn how to play the Irish harp. That is how Finn Coleman, one of our students who's graduating from Central High School this year, he, he won the concerto competition or was one of the winners of the concerto competition playing a classical piece on the Irish harp with 68 lever changes. And he performed it with the Central High School Orchestra just a few weeks ago. So he got started at learning to play Irish Introduction to Irish Music Harp or to Irish Harp Camp here at the Center for Irish Music when Maddie Ernst was teaching it. So you never know where it'll take your children or the children of your friends and family. Let them all know. And then there's also a, another camp. It's an Irish music and arts camp. It's a half day camp, just like the harp camp. And uh, they are happening July 31st to August 4th. Our full day camp, when it opened, it filled up and had a waiting list of 11 people within like a month of opening up. So we will offer more Irish music summer camps next summer. Um, all right. Well, let's get the music going. Um, I'm going to call back to the stage uh, Nick Lethert, who's going to introduce our next round of artists. So here you go. Here's Nick. Thanks. Thanks very much. I'm honored to uh, introduce Maureen E. Kaja, a fantastic, phenomenal uh, Shano singer from Lettermore and from Boston. She's done so much great work with the Irish language, radio programs and uh, co-founder of Boston La Gay Yoga and many other. Uh, but she's just a phenomenal singer and great personality and she's looking at me like she's gonna sing now. Gee, I was looking around to see who that great lady was. <laughs> oh, how wonderful to be here. And it's such an honor to be here. And all I can say is this place is inspirational. The community is wonderful. And as an Irish person, I feel so respected and I feel so much love and energy for my culture. I am so proud of my culture because it's all been, I just seen it all today. And Nora and Brian and the O'Shea's, my goodness, what they have built here and what they, you know, accomplish here is incredible. And of course, they bring the very best people. And to be with this, the grand crowd you saw up there prior to me, you know, they have to bring a little riffraff, you know. So I come along, but I have just enjoyed everything. Anyway, so I think I'm going to start with a song that I think it's a little bit lively and will warm you up. And I was teaching it for the past two days, and it's called Potta Morfati, and there'd be nothing as good now as a fine pot of potatoes, all flowery. I can just see them exactly coming out of the pot from the open fire. So it's called Potta Morfati, and I want to hear the chorus bellowing back at me. Shake pot in the lap like you could in jitches. So wo, so wo, so wo, mali. So wo, malana skedera nachli. 
That's a cute little lullaby and it's sung by a grandmother to a grand, her granddaughter and the granddaughter loved her potatoes. And you know, she was, a, and when all the other ladies in town were out drinking their teas or wearing their shawls, Barbara was either with a, her thumb in her mouth or a, a, a blanket over her head. And, she's, and then she's gonna put her in a coach but it's gonna be made out of an old willow lobster pot and wheels on it, high style. Well, now we come to a song that I really love because it's about, it really gives you an insight how romantic Celtic and Irish men are. <laughs> and it's called in Colleen Farrell Finn, but it also uh, shows you, shows and tells of how independent these, these young women are too. And we are an independent breed, really. But I'm happy, I'm so happy to be here, as I said, and there isn't enough I could say. But I also, have, there's somebody very special in the audience to me. She's my good friend. She's my good friend from the Army family. Her son, she's a Gold Star mom. Her son gave the ultimate sacrifice, but he, my son was his friend and served with them on their four deployments in Iraq. She's Jan Bannock, and his sister, Anne, Say, a daughter, Anne St. Martin, and his namesake, Joseph St. Martin, is here. Thank you. I am proud to be an American. I am a naturalized citizen, but I still hold my EU passport in the back of my pocket. And only, as I say, in America could I be, would I would be allowed to have our own culture, immerse others into the culture, and for it to be appreciated, especially the Irish language. I thank you. Again, I thank the people of this wonderful uh, establishment, the O'Shea's, and Nora, the director, and Brian, and all the volunteers who can't do enough for us. As Sean Gavin said, we've driven them nuts. And all we do is just be ferried here back and forth. But this one is in Colleen Farrell's film. And um, it's about a man, he spies this girl, and she seems to have a lot of land and, you know, cows. And, you know, that in the olden days, that meant a lot. Didn't mean, so he's trying to woo her. And boy, he tries every which way. But she didn't budge. Son of Coplavo, Egmastorin, Nahedas Mariolinia, 
in its, its real style of Shano singing. And of course, I only sang three verses in both languages because the 20, I was warned coming out not to do the 20. Because <laughs> the, the two stars coming behind after me wanted more time. <laughs> anyway, it's again, I, I, it's wonderful to see so many faces out there, and I know you understood every word. And we had, I had so many people in class today that I had to photocopy things three times. So that's, that tells you it was a great class. And any child living in, any, in this community, this is the place to come. You'll, you'll have, and mothers and dads and uh, grandmas and grandmothers and family, you'll have not one more day of worry once they step in here, because <laughs> this is the place to be. I think I'm going to change my address. <laughs> anyway, this is a song, anyway, this, we have to come back to reality because we, are, we were a nation under siege for so many years and centuries. But you know, as they say, we never gave in. And the other night I was thinking of a song that an old man, an old guy, an old friend of mine, uh, Johnny Warsin Larry, he was from Corna, and he used to sing a song called The Dear Little Isle. And somehow, this in the past few days, I was looking out, and I just say, oh my god, these flowers were plucked, but they grew so quick again. And that's what I think of your community. You are really and truly just a thriving, growing, and inspirational to anybody who's involved in culture. And thank you. So this is called The Dear Little Isle. I was going to sing another song, but it would be too long. But it speaks to our resilience. And if anyone who knows it in the audience, feel free to sing, because I'm telling you, you need to know your words around here, because everybody knows the songs. <laughs> but this is called The Dear Little Isle. There's a dear little isle in the her sons and her daughters with emotion when heard on the shores of this far off distant land it's Ireland our country the the pain. 
of bards and of chieftains whose names live in stories. Oh, may they live on forever on his story's page. For I love every blade of grass green on your mountains, every leaf on your trees, every rock on your strand. I love your green hills and your My own dear native land. You once were a proud and a glorious nation. Your name and your fame are known all over the world. Till Miss came more you and sought desolation and your emerald banner in slavery lay unfurled. They tortured your children, destroyed Exterminate you a long time ago, but somehow the Irish were like wild creeping flowers. Oh, the faster you pluck us, oh, the quicker we seem to grow. For we love every blade. Of grass green on your mountains, every leaf on your tree, every rock on your strand. And we love your green hills and your our own dear native land. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much. I'll hand you back I'll hand you back to these wonderful musicians that I am so blessed to be counted among them. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. You brought considerable warmth to our stage, and uh, I swear I saw the sun shining there. Does anyone need an introduction to the Kane sisters? Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, well, they're from Ireland, and um, they play violins. Come on out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's not it, yeah. And then there's Brian Miller. And I really, one of my pet peeves is calling him the aforementioned Brian Miller. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to call him the aforementioned Brian Miller. Because that's just going to make the night that much longer. It's going to add four syllables every time I say his name. Because I say his name a lot. And I'm sure all of you say Brian Miller a lot. But you don't say, you're not saying, didn't he already mention him? Shouldn't he say the aforementioned Brian Miller? And I say the Kane sisters a lot. I've said that a lot. Have you? you probably didn't know, oh, but I've never said the aforementioned Kane sisters. <laughs> anyway, here they are.
Are you enjoying yourselves? <laughs> well, thanks for organising the lovely weather for us. We feel so much at home. <laughs> to hell. So much freezing. Oh! We couldn't even come out and hear everyone else because we didn't want to get cold. Our fingers get cold and then it's miserable. But we feel at home. So thank you very much. Actually, it's warmer at home at the moment. <laughs> yeah. We'll survive. We're good, strong, thick-skinned Connemara women. Isn't that right, Maury Nukeda? <laughs> We've been having an absolute ball. What a great weekend. Oh, my God. We were here 14 years ago. Was there anyone here? Hands up. 2009. Oh, my God. And we haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Just a bit wiser. <laughs> All right, so down to music now. We get the show on the road. Um, we're going to start off with Paddy Fahis and Paddy Fahis. And at home, we're known as the Paddy Fahis.
McCormick to the stage, fast. <laughs> Thanks a million. Um, can you hear us now? Honest opinion. <laughs> less guitar for me and Yvonne Cormick um, on the stage. Yeah, less guitar, less of Yvonne and more of me. <laughs> Maybe less of everyone. Um, okay. Stop so. talking, Liz. <laughs> Let me talk for a second. <laughs> okay, we're going to continue with um, a reel and into a couple of jigs. The first one is a tune that Liz wrote called Emily's Buzz. And um, it was after uh, a cousin of ours gave a fiddle to me and said, there's a buzz in my fiddle. And I, and I played the fiddle and I couldn't hear a buzz in the fiddle. And then I said, Liz, you try out this fiddle and... Uh, See, can you hear a buzz in this fiddle? And uh, she took the fiddle and she wrote this tune. She didn't hear any buzz either, but we called the tune Emily's Buzz. Emily's Buzz. And the only other Emily I know is from Emily here, Flagstad, that collected us at the airport and has been an absolute mighty woman altogether. And it's so lovely meeting her again and her husband, Brian, because we taught Myra, their daughter, when, she, when we were here last and she was only a child. But after... <laughs> After this weekend, I, I have it in my head to call it Emily's The Biz, not Emily's Buzz at all. <laughs> and then we'll follow into um, a couple of jigs. The first jig is another tune Liz wrote called Johnny Forrick Feather, after the great Johnny Connolly, uh, Melodian player. And then the last one is a tune I wrote called One for Leo. I don't think I've anything to say. Oh no, this is very weird. loud, yeah. Cormac, we'll have less of Yvonne. Just play, play again there, Yvonne. In the monitor, is that nice? Probably still have a little less guitar to it. Yes, very loud. Now, seeing that the sound is lovely, it's really good, Cormac. You're doing a mighty job. Let's hear it for Cormac O'Shea on sound. That's better. <laughs> Thank you. 
them all right. We just decided to throw in an extra jig there that um, we played in the class today um, with Mary, I can't even pronounce your name, Mary, Mary V. I'm just going to say Mary V. Um, it's, the last one's called Bernie from British. So I wrote that one a couple of years ago when I was teaching in British in County Dublin. So we might do that one um, at some stage over the weekend as well. Um, now we're going to continue with Yvonne. <laughs> a hornpipe called, oh, <laughs> called the Queen of the West. Maureen Nikaja. <laughs> We never, we hadn't met Maureen before, properly anyway, until this weekend. And it's just so lovely to get to know her and share the same sense of humour and the laughs and the crack and the chat. And actually, it's such a lovely way. <laughs> it's actually, we, we, we dedicate this to all the, the, the artists and the teachers and the tutors here because it's such a lovely way to spend time with the family because we never do, not, not in recent times anyway, between the two Seans and all the staff like and Nora and Brian and I, I, I started it. I shouldn't have started. <laughs> <laughs> too many. Too many. Gronya Hamley and come on, Yvonne, help me, help me, help me. But you know who they are. So it's just so lovely to, because you wouldn't normally have that time at home. So it's really nice to, or, or here even. So it's lovely, lovely to spend time, um, quality time with everyone, you know. So I'll stop talking now. <laughs> After the hornpipe, we're going to play a couple of reels. <laughs> The first one is um, a tune written by Brun Brendan Mulhair and it's called Stars and Stripes and apparently he wrote the tune when he arrived in, in the States. And then the last reel is called Maura Connolly's after a great, um, Maura Connolly is a great fiddle player um, and the tune is written by Sean Ryan, the great Sean Ryan. Can we have less guitar up here? Cormac. I don't see where Cormac is. He's down there. It's fairly loud.
<laughs> well, you know what, but you're a lovely audience. Even in the cold, you're not miserable or nothing like the people at home if they were sitting in the cold. with the jig and two reels. Um, the first one is Paddy Fahey's, and I, I got um, a Paddy Fahey class tomorrow with all instruments, right? And, and I was thinking, oh my God, what are we going to do? What am I going to teach, like, all instruments for Paddy Fahey's tunes? Because they're in tricky keys, some of them. But this one isn't. Now, you better start listening very carefully, because this, this is what we're going to do. I think it's first thing in the morning, is it? <coughs> yeah. So it'll be fresh in your brains. <laughs> it's in the key of D major. It's one of his... Um, Less, um, it's one of the easiest, one of the more easier ones anyway, the less intricate, we'll say. And um, we're going to follow that with um, uh, a Joe Liddy tune. Now, Joe Liddy is a fabulous composer um, from County Leitrim. He lived um, in Dublin and he's got two um, books of his, mu of his music out and um, absolutely beautiful tunes. And this one is called McKenna Country. A lovely tune, and we're going to follow that with with one of Joe's as well, called "The Humours of Nikki." So, hope you enjoy this selection. Um, another thing I have to say: I met a lovely woman during the weekend, and she came up to me and she said, "Good, you know, it was the nicest compliment ever." She said, "You remind me the two of you have two fish." fish? <laughs> she said, "Gliding together." Aww. Yeah. What kind um. of fish? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks a million. Thank you. The wind was picking up there in the middle of that. <laughs> we were too. <laughs> and the hands are getting colder when the wind picks up. Okay, we're going to follow. Um, we just have another few selections for you. Um, we're going to follow with a couple of jigs. Um, there's not too much we can say about the first two tunes because they're both Paddy Fahis. This um, actually it was last September we brought out a new album. Um, and it's called uh, In Memory of Paddy Fahey. We do play a lot of his tunes and we have recorded a good few of his tunes. So we thought, why not? Paddy passed away um, three years ago. Was it three? No, it's four years ago now at the great old age of 103. So, um, yeah, so we, uh, we had to play more of his tunes and uh, dedicate the album to him. And then the last tune in this set is called Paddy Kelly's. Okay.
time, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so you're nearly ready to thank go you. home. <laughs> Get into your warm beds. <laughs> But we have one more selection for you, and I think um, we're going to be calling on the students, the teens, uh, to play a couple of tunes as well, which i um, really looking forward to. Um, what are you saying, Tommy? <laughs> all right, so we're going to finish off with three reels. The first one is one of my own, and I taught it today. So this is all for my 20 students in my first class, and my 20 students in the second class, and there's some of them down there. And it's called The Welcome Call. <laughs> In D minor. <laughs> Not hard at all, no. Anyways. This is one of them. You weren't listening, bold. Back at the class. <laughs> oh, stop it, Maureen, you're tonic. All we need is Jane around here. <laughs> you are, you're tonic. And then we're going to continue with the tune. And then we're actually going to finish off with, um, believe it or not, not Paddy Fahey's. It's Joe Liddy. We're going back up to Leitrim again for these two. Um, the second one is called the Leitrim Rover. And the last one's called the Good Old Garavogue. We learned this during, um, during lockdown, I think. Like, I think Joe Liddy's tunes were came to the forefront during lockdown, which was lovely um, to get more familiar with Joe's music because they're beautiful tunes, beautiful fiddle tunes. <laughs> And as the great Joe Burke said, if you don't like it, we'll play it again. <laughs> <laughs> but we would like to thank Nora and Randall for inviting us back here to St. Paul after 14 years. Oh, my God, we love the place. And obviously all the committee here as well. I Adrian, mean for driving us and Liam and for Cormac and... I mean, all the O'Shea family are unbelievable. Thanks to Emily and to Mary, and I I'll be hung now if I don't remember people to thank, but we'd just like to thank you all because yeah. we've ne we felt so welcome. As soon as we landed on the ground here um, in St. Paul at the airport and Emily, Emily collected us, it was like, yeah, it was like we'd never left or we'd never been here, you know, in 14 years. <laughs> too long, way too long, we're back. And we hope it's not another 14 years again. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a few CDs with us with the new album. And because uh, we, we, we have uh, come with the times, we've got USB cards as well. Um, those of you that don't have CD players in their cars. We all have, we all have a, a, a huge stack of CDs. We were just talking about all the CDs we have. And uh, <laughs> we have to get rid of them. <laughs> Anyways, thanks a million. Fire them out. <laughs> and thanks to yourselves. Thanks so much for staying in the cold. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. It's not cold. It's not cold. Oh, really? Is it not? Well, actually, I'm kind of warm. <laughs>
students and maybe all the, the teachers, all the tutors on the stage. <laughs> Let's hear it for Yvonne Kane, Liz Kane, and Brian Miller, Kane sisters. All right, we're gonna call all of the teenagers up on stage. Get ready for them. You guys come all the way over here as quickly as you can. So a few thank yous. Thank you first to Cormac O'Shea on sound. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad timing. Um, to, uh, to Pete McCauley and uh, all the camera crew who are here streaming this live tonight. To Christo, who's helping on the stage and doing all sorts of things. Adrian and Hannah on stage managing. To Christine and Greg at the bar. To Siobhan and Chad on merch. And uh, a huge thank you. Let's give a massive round of applause to Joanne Vano, our volunteer chair of the Minnesota Irish Music Weekend. You're the best! <laughs> Joanne loves Mim, and she, she's just amazing. To, the, um, to our incredible team of volunteers. So this event takes a lot of volunteer time. So thanks to everybody who volunteered for this festival this weekend. Thank you so much. We couldn't do this without you. And then especially to the Center for Irish Music Board of Directors, to the staff, to the parents. We love you guys. And to all of our students who are here behind me. Are you on stage? Are you ready? OK, so our master artists, Sean Gavin over there. Let's hear it for Sean Gavin. <laughs> Danny Diamond, Asher Gray. Sean McComsky. <laughs> Gavin Strapp. <laughs> Marla Fivish. <laughs> Maureen Akaja. <laughs> Grania Hambly. <laughs> Dahi Sproul. <laughs> and then Brian Miller and the Kane sisters. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so we're going to finish off with one more tune for you. And I see a microphone that has nobody in front of it. Somebody should go in front of that. Oh, yeah. Claire Venorti. There's two Get microphones. Come on in, you go. I've just got something to say. It's actually Maeve Lofta's birthday. She's over from Connemara. She's Maureen Nikaja's niece. And it's her birthday tomorrow! Happy birthday!
Thanks, Ivan. That was quite fun.